Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So my stepdad, Fernando, brought me four hydraulic cylinders off of one of his Kubota tractors over the weekend. He had called me and uh, he was down there working on it and said, hey, I've got four cylinders that are leaking oil. Can I bring these down there? Are you able to reseal them for me? I said, absolutely, bring them down. You know, we've done these before in the past for him. Fernando actually has several uh, uh, tractors. And so there's been several cylinders that he has brought to me. and. And it's uh, most of them have just been a, a simple reseal job. So I believe that's what uh, we're going to do today. Let me go ahead and show you the four cylinders in question here. These are the four hydraulic cylinders off of his tractor. They appear to be uh, very similar. There are a couple differences. You see the thickness of the rod gland here, and then see the thickness of the rod gland there. So I think they're going to be maybe the same i don't know i can't tell if they're the same diameter or not these might be smaller than these right here but anyway we're going to get these in the shop get them all cleaned up we'll get the grease off of them and we will get these things apart and uh, see about getting some seals ordered i think that's all it's going to be i can tell that the rod wipers are deteriorated and i'm and i guarantee you it's going to be the the wiper the rod seal and the piston seal is probably deteriorated. That's just something that happens with age. These, uh, these hydraulics, after a period of years, you just gotta go back into them, repack them, put new seals in them, and they'll be good to go. We'll get the bulk of this grease off the end of it, and we'll go down there to the CRC Smart Washer and give the whole thing a bath and get all of the uh, grease and oil off of them. That stuff's been stuck on here for a while. See if we see if the smart washer will clean that off. That's hard cake grease. I didn't <laughs> I didn't expect it to be a packed in there hard like that, dried up. May have to go use some of the industrial uh, heavy duty degreaser to get this thick grease off here because it is thick and stuck and not wanting to come off very well. Some of these harder lumps of grease that I wasn't able to get off, I'm just using the uh, super degreaser right there and it's been cutting it off. It's working pretty good. We got our cylinders clean. We got a vise set up right here and a stand to support the tube. This is where we will disassemble them right here. Also have a, have a bucket down there. You're always gonna need a bucket when you do this because you're gonna have a little bit of oil uh, drain out of this tube whenever you pull this piston out. So typically with all of your hydraulic cylinders, you're going to have some type of rod gland, which is this guy right here. This is the, this screws into the barrel. So these two pieces are threaded. This also holds your, it holds an O-ring that seals the tube from leaking through the, the threads here and coming out there. It also has the seal for the rod inside there, the rod seal and the rod wiper. Okay. And this really, the seals inside here are what is wrong and what we need to replace. So we need to get these out. So you can see that there's a drilled hole there. There's also a drilled hole on the other side. So there's a few tools that you should have if you're gonna be working on these. And I'll show you. So you have different spanner wrenches. This is called a hook spanner. It's got the hook on the end. This is called a pin spanner. It's got the round pin. All right, these are used on the OD of your part like so, okay? And then you have 
a face spanner, which is this guy right here, adjustable face spanner. So this is where this tool is actually goes into these holes here, but you can see this is actually the wrong tool for this application, uh, for this size gland I'm saying. So we're not gonna be able to use this one here. Now they do make these in different sizes. I forget what the part numbers are. They're all pretty well universal. And these are pretty inexpensive tools that you can buy. This is Williams, all of mine are the Williams brand. But there's, a, I, if, I, if I had to guess, they're all probably made by one manufacturer and they stamp a different name on there. But uh, these are really handy tools to have. You can find them used sometimes, but uh, really not that expensive to buy. So they make them in different sizes, different pin sizes for different uh, cylinders. So with saying that, I don't have the proper uh, adjustable face spanner. I'm probably gonna use this pin spanner right here, and we're gonna go ahead and just drill us a very shallow hole. I believe that's uh, for a 3 16 And we'll drill us a very shallow hole in this. Hopefully I won't cut into the, the groove in there where the seal's at. We have just enough that we can wrap this thing around it and unscrew it. All right, we're gonna use a 3 16 drill bit. And since I know I've got plenty of meat, on this side of the uh, gland, we're gonna put it right there. We've got plenty of material between the OD and that ID groove of that uh, wiper right there. And this is aluminum, so it's real easy to drill. And I don't wanna make it too deep. And hopefully, that may be enough to uh, catch this guy. Let's go a little bit deeper than that. Maybe that'll be enough right there. That looks pretty good. Now let's see if I can crack it loose by hand. Look at that, see? Usually, I have been getting pretty lucky with these cylinders that Fernando brings and they're not hard to, to get apart. So all you gotta do, just be real careful if you put your hole in there, remember there's gonna be grooves underneath there so you can't just go crazy and drill a big old deep hole in that thing without knowing where it's at. Just go ahead and unscrew it all the way. I got the bucket underneath there in case we have any oil come out of there, it should be loose. I'll show you what I mean right here. We got our, we got our bucket. All right, not bad at all. A little bit of oil there. All right. Got one of the uh, PTFE piston seals on that side. Very, very similar to what we've done. I think they're pretty well the same. So there's a, there's a better look at your rod gland. This is the O-ring that I was talking about that seals your barrel. This O-ring just seals moisture from getting down inside there. You know, especially a lot of cylinders are made of uh, ductile iron or cast iron on this end. So if you don't seal the water from getting down in there, you actually start getting corrosion problems and these threads want to lock up. And that's what, that's when it's an aggravation trying to get these things apart. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just, let's get all four of them apart. Then we'll start getting the pistons off there so that we can get the, the gland. So we'll have to slide it all the way down just like that. We moved on to our next two cylinders. These are a different size. These are slightly larger. So 
you can see the, again, the holes for the adjustable face spanner. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, buy the right tool so that I have this one, I have what I need here. But this one is too big. This takes a, these are for a 5 16th hole or eight millimeter. And these are drilled for quarter inch. Now I have gone in there before and just opened these up so that you could use this, but these holes are drilled so close to the OD of this that I don't, I'm worried that if I try to drill the hole that it's gonna be cutting in. Probably it will still work, but I'm gonna go ahead and just add another hole here to the OD just like I did so that we can just use our uh, OD pin spanner to uh, unscrew this. Hopefully, we'll give that a try and see if that works. So there's plenty of metal there to put a 3 16 hole. Remember that bucket I told you you put down there? For that right there. Let's see if we can get the pistons off here. I'm going to try the uh, DeWalt Impact. That sucker, those, those are tight. Nope, it ain't going to do it. All right, I'll get my, we'll have to get a breaker bar out here and uh, bust those things loose because they are on there tight. All right, let's see if I can get it with a little mechanical leverage here. You can use the Armstrong. <clears throat> They're tight. All right, now we should be able to zip them off there with the impact now. plug all the way in hurts my ears there we go oh yeah use the uh, red loctite that's why I couldn't get them loose right there so you can use some heat on this and it'll it'll burn that loctite but if you can break it loose like I did I'd rather do that than trying to get everything hot all right there's your piston And here is the gland. Definitely some uh, bad seals and bad wiper just deteriorating in there. Oh yeah, that rod seal is just completely flattened out and I can see it breaking apart inside there. O-ring still seems to be fine, but we'll go ahead and replace everything. All right, one down, three more to go. Same thing, deteriorated wiper and rod seal.
So something I've observed as we've gotten these apart, we've have, we have two of these rods here that have some bad spots in the chrome plating. So I'm planning on getting the uh, rod stock there. This is inch and a quarter chrome plated rod. I'm going to go ahead and whenever I order the seals, I'm going to order the rod stock as well. And we'll go ahead and replace these two rods right here. You can see here in the chrome plating, you have some pits. This right here will just destroy a seal in no time. That'll cut your seal and you're going to start having bypass underneath your uh, rod seal there. So this is a no go right there. If you are in a pinch in a hurry or maybe, you know, you couldn't get your hand on stock, you know, right away, you can certainly put a new seal on this and go to town. I'm sure there's people out there in the, you know, out in the country that it might take a while to build to get a piece of rod stock and machine one or have a shop machine and you're trying to just fix something in a hurry. I'm not saying you can't run this, but this will damage a seal. Uh, pretty quickly okay so we're going to go ahead and replace that one this one the same way there's a bad spot right here and there's also a couple spots right in here this is where the chrome plating has uh, actually just flaked off there okay and uh, that one's the same way so two new rods and what we'll do is we will just cut the rod eyes off right there probably about flush with that flat We'll just cut the rod eyes off. I'll probably drill and tap it, put some kind of threaded stud in there. And then when we machine the new rods, I'll drill and tap the end of the rods. We'll machine a bevel on there for weld, and then we'll have it to where they'll screw together. And then we'll just simply weld it up, and that'll work just fine right there. All right, so now I got to start on, I'm going to get all these things cleaned up. We're going to get the rod wipers and the seals out of there, and I've got to start sizing this stuff up so I can uh, get an order placed and uh, get this stuff coming. There's nothing left of it. It's just going to fall apart. If I can't get one of those wipers out, I'll just have to measure this groove there to see what, what uh, style and size of rod wiper it is. But that's what age does to all of these types of uh, hydraulic seals. It's just disintegrating. Just falling apart. This is a loaded seal. because It's got an O-ring in there. There's your seal and your wiper. <laughs> All right, we're on our last rod gland here, and it's pretty evident what the, what the main problem is. These seals are just completely deteriorated. This is your rod wiper that I'm getting out here. that down inside there that's your actual rod seal the green material that's your rod seal and it's just completely deteriorated That's the type of seal that's a loaded seal. It's got that O-ring in there. Just trying to scrape what's left of it out because it's completely growed to the wall in there. So I got to do some cleaning on these things to get rid of all of this crud that's still inside the glands here. just down to the uh, piston seal right here. These 
would still be good. I can, I can tell they're good, but there's no point going this far into it and not replacing every seal that's uh, in this hydraulic. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove them. This will damage them getting them off. It's a one shot deal. Once you put them on there, you're not gonna get them off without kind of cutting into them. But like I said, it ain't no big deal because we're gonna be replacing them anyway. Let's see if I can get underneath it. That's your seal there. And then you have a rubber expander underneath it. It's just another, it's just an O-ring. So that is your piston seal right there. The O-ring goes on first and then the the yellow part goes out on top of it and it compresses. The O-ring keeps it compressed outward so that it's always, it's always compressing against the, the cylinder bore inside the tube there. There's another way you can do this. You already know that you're gonna replace them and I'm gonna size them up by measuring the groove. I'm not gonna try to measure the, uh, the actual seal itself, but you can just cut it. And it's a lot easier just to get off there that way. Okay, I've got all of the seals now sized up and I just placed the order with uh, CRC, Cylinder Repair Components. They're over in Robertsdale, Alabama, and uh, they, they supply anything you need to, to manufacture or repair hydraulic cylinders. So all of your soft parts, all of your raw, uh, raw stock, so aluminum, they, they stock chrome plated rod, they uh, honed ID tubing, pretty much anything for cylinders, they have it. So. I just used my old Hercules hydraulics book here, but the uh, Hercules part numbers and the CRC part numbers are the same. The, the books are literally the same thing, but uh, they told me you can actually go online now, CRC distribution and uh, everything's online. So you can get on there and, and order seals, rod stock, anything you need right on the website. So I just, I go through here and I find the type of seal that I'm looking for and I go to the page and then I size it up. But I always go through here every time I use a groove mic. This is my Michitoya groove mic right here. And of course some calipers. I use some ID mics in there. So I measure the groove diameter and the groove width. I write that stuff down. And then that gives me the dimensions that I need to, need to know when I come in here to the book and I find the seal I'm looking for, then they have it specced out by size. And that's what I do. Once I find the one I need, I write the part number down and uh, bam, that's it right there. So I don't remember, I don't remember now if I mentioned this or not, but I'm going to be replacing two of these rods. So this one right here has a lot of uh, flaking on it and some rust and you can feel it feels really rough. So this rod needs to be replaced. And I think it was this one. Yep. This one here, it's got a bad spot right there and a bad spot right there inch and a quarter chrome plated rod stock. So I got two pieces of that cut that's gonna be coming here as well. So it should be here in one or two days. And once it gets in, I'll start, we'll go ahead and start on the rods and get those built. It'll be a pretty simple job getting it back together.